Hey everyone, so Pika, the incredible and free AI video generator has begun rolling out its big 1.0 update. Pika was nice enough to invite me to an onboarding session for the new 1.0 version. So I thought I'd take what I'd learned there and pass it along to you. So today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know to get started with Pika. And I think this is a perfect jump on point for new users as well. And if you're a Pika Pro, well, there are a lot of quality of life updates that you're really gonna enjoy. Okay, let's dive in. So first off, and probably most importantly, if you don't have access to Pika, you will need to sign up on the wait list. That said, they have begun admitting users in, so hopefully your wait won't be too long. Once you have access, well, I have good news for you Discord haters, the UI is web-based. The UI on the site is really well thought out. There's a couple of little tricks I'll be going over in just a minute. So obviously you will first see this explore page. There's nothing here yet. This will populate as more users come in and begin generating material. Uh, we also have my library here. This is everything that you've generated so far, as well as two different options to view. Down below, you'll have your prompt box, obviously, uh, the ability to upload images or videos for reference, uh, video options over here, your motion controls, and perimeters. So initially, we're gonna start off pretty simple, and then, of course, we're gonna get weird from there. So this is going to be um, cinematic, a leather chair in a study next to a fireplace, warm feeling, comfortable, and calm. Uh, so let's generate that. And within a few moments, I'd say less than 30 seconds, we have this, which looks pretty solid. Uh, from here, we have a number of different options, including retrying the prompt, reprompting it as well, the edit, which we're going to definitely get to in a moment, and then uh, an extension, the adding four seconds. So let's give that a shot really quickly. As you can see, by hitting that extend, our prompt returns to the prompt box, and then we have an attachment of our generated video. Uh, from here, we can actually continue to play around. Say we can now explore motion control, where we have panning controls, tilting controls, rotation controls, and zooming controls, along with a slider for strength of motion. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a zoom out here um, and then fire it off. And with that, we now have a seven second shot with two different camera moves on it. So one thing that I think that everyone is going to absolutely love is this retry button, which is just reroll. But the way that the site is now set up, it's just so much easier in terms of organization and keeping track of your shots. So if we have our prompt here and I just want to reroll it, if I hit this retry button, uh, you can see that it now actually generates along in a thumbnail strip here. Anyone who spent any time generating AI videos knows that it's a bit of a dice roll every single time. So having that retry button is a great way of quickly generating up four or five videos based off of one prompt to see where you want to start honing in on. I mean, almost to prove my point, we have one generation that's like the study that's on fire. Uh, we did end up with this one, which I kind of like. I like the look of that chair. Obviously, one of the more groundbreaking things in Pika 1.0 is the fact that we have video in painting. So taking a quick look at that, uh, if you come up to hit the edit button here, once again, our prompt with our attached video ends up down here. So we can just hit the modify region button, which then comes up with a pop-up. We then select an area within our video and we can prompt. So uh, here we'll prompt a man reading a book. And within a few moments, yeah, that is not bad. Now I did want to note that you definitely do want to make sure that you, you know, crop the entire area with that in painting tool. Uh, Cause if you don't, you will end up with, you know, some weird results. For example, when I didn't put the in painting box all the way down to the floor, we ended up with Lieutenant Dan here. That's a deep cut for you Forrest Gump fans. Prompting is relatively friendly. Pika has always been pretty good about that. Um, you could use fairly detailed prompts like establishing shot, cinematic, uh, Viking Warrior, I did 4K HD, high resolution and remastered. Or you can use more naturalistic language as I did in this Fallout inspired shot uh, with uh, cinematic wearing blue jumpsuit with a German Shepherd in a dystopian wasteland. Look, I know that there's like some weird mutant thing that's happening back here, but Overall, I just love this shot. I mean, look at that good boy. Look at that good boy. We do have controls here for aspect ratio, obviously, and then our frames per second. Um, I just generally leave that at 24 frames a second, but strength of motion can play a pretty large part. Uh, it's one thing I've always really appreciated about Pika is the fact that it really swings for the fences when it does motion. So cranking up the motion for our Viking gives us this shot, which is pretty awesome. Whereas re-rolling our Viking with a lower motion scale gives us this, which if you run them back to back, looks like a pretty pretty epic Viking rap battle. If you need some tips on prompting, you can check out a free PDF that I put together on 
on prompting in Pika. This was for the last version, but all of the advice pretty much still stands. Included in the PDF is a whole list of called shots that are known to work within Pika. It also includes a template on negative prompting, which we're going to get to in just a minute. Uh, the link is down below. Again, it is totally free, though if you'd like to leave a donation, it is always highly appreciated. In terms of Pika 1.0's model improvement, it's pretty remarkable, especially when you compare it to Pika at launch. So these were two shots that were generated very early in with Pika. I believe these were generated by a user named Sosa. Taking that same prompt and generating it in the 1.0 model gives us this, which, yeah, that's a pretty remarkable improvement. Another place that Pika really shines is using anime models. So taking that exact same prompt that we saw, just adding anime to the front of it, we get this. A few more examples here. Yeah, it looks really great. We are going to move over to image prompting in just a minute, but two quick, fairly important things, and that's on guidance scale and negative prompting. Both can be found under the perimeters tab. Uh, consistency with text is guidance scale. So it goes up to 25 and down to five and it middles at 12. If you turn it up to 25, I don't wanna say it ignores your text prompt, but it tends to have maybe a little more fun with it. Whereas dropping it down, it will try to keep the consistency of your text prompt, uh, perhaps with a little bit less imagination and movement. A trick that I've been using is to crank the slider all the way down and begin with your text prompt there, and then slowly start turning it up to see what you get until you end up with a happy medium. I've been finding that between eight and 10 seems to get me some pretty good results, but every once in a while, I just like to crank it up to 25 just to see what's gonna happen. Negative prompting in Pika is a really, really big deal. It's no secret that Pika tends to do some pretty weird stuff. I'm gonna talk about leaning into that in just a little bit, um, but you'll often get shots like this with one person leaving the frame and another person sliding in. Another from our Fallout series where we ended up with a dog person. So you're definitely gonna wanna use utilize negative prompts. There's a pretty good starter negative prompt that is in the PDF. Um, you can ignore the dash NEG. That's obviously a discord command. You don't need the quotations, but you can just copy, you know, ugly, blurry, deformed, multiple limb, blah, 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 um, into your uh, negative prompt. Adjust based off of what you see. For example, here, um, obviously she is walking backwards. So you would hit the edit button. And then in the negative prompt, you could write in backwards walking. Image prompting is of course image prompting. So we'll take this mid journey image and bring it in. Uh, we don't actually even need to necessarily text prompt here. You can actually just take uh, the motion control tab and choose a, a camera control for it and a strength of the motion. Let's take that up to maybe two and run it and see what happens. And there you go, not bad. Now I would say that this is one that I might go through and do an edit on. Uh, with a negative of talking, uh, but I'm just gonna let this one slide. That said, I will say that I have noticed that when you are doing image to video, if you try to do the add four seconds, that's when you're gonna see a lot of problems start to arise. The problems generally seem to start to arise once you hit the five to seven second mark. So I really think of add four as more like add one when you're dealing with image to video, but I am not discounting it at all, considering that there are times when those extra 20 some odd frames uh, really can make a break. Add four does seem to work a lot better when you are using text to video. For example, here, I took this shot up to 11 seconds. Now granted, as the shot continues on with each add four, things get a little bit softer and fuzzier. That said, I mean, it's an 11 second shot. That's pretty long. Between each ad, you can change the camera controls as well. For example, here, if we go back to that original shot and do an ad four, I can change the motion control to a tilt up for the second shot. So a shot like this works out pretty well. I don't actually really recommend going above seven seconds unless you're doing something super abstract. Another interesting trick that you can try with reprompting is just to completely change the style of a video. Uh, for example, here's a cowboy that I rolled up. This is commercial establishing shot cowboy, but by hitting reprompt and by giving it the prompt in the style of Van Gogh, we now have, well, it's not quite cowboy Van Gogh, but it's, you know, our cowboy shot in the style of Van Gogh. Hey, he's still got his ear. Easily one of the most exciting new features about Pika 1.0 is all of the canvas features. Um, so taking this uh, nine by 16 image of a pirate ship flying through the clouds and animating it, we get this, which looks pretty cool. Um, but if we wanted to turn this into a 16 nine image, we can come down to the expand canvas 
button and we have different aspect ratios that we can change our video to. So let's try 16.9 here. And sure enough, we now have our pirate ship flying on a cloud of dreams. Um, you can continue to do so as well. So we could take our video here, once again, run an expand canvas with a 1-1, one, one, uh, place our pirate ship wherever we want and run the whole thing all over again. Blaine Brown had a pretty cool example of this using video. So obviously the bottom source is actual source video. And then the canvas has been expanded to showcase the rest of the sky and the beach. Here's a Adams Family-esque uh, example from Styles Morales. Yeah, I mean, it really clearly shows how uh, creative you can be with this new feature. Rolling back to video in painting because I think it's super cool, but I did want to go over a couple of limitations with it. Um, for example, in this video where we've got this dude, I guess like just vape broing, I wanted to change this couple out to a dog. So um, if we go over to edit, once again, modify the region and cover them and change the prompt to dog, we get this, which although the dog does kind of distort a little bit, I mean, it completely removed that couple. Vape bro and the guy that he's talking to are still completely intact, pretty much just the entire shot, except now we have a slightly morphing dog there. Now, one place that I think this really flies is when you feed it an actual video source, as our friend Martin Harlan did on a very cold day in Berlin. Uh, yeah, this looks really, really cool. There is a limitation of three seconds per shot, but I do think that Martin shows that with a little creativity, that doesn't really matter. So there you go. I know this was a lot of information, but I do think it's more than enough to get you started. That said, if you have any questions at all, please leave them below in the comments. I'll definitely be circling back to Pika. You know, 1.0 is only a couple of days old and I feel like we've only scratched the surface in terms of what this model can do. So if you found this video helpful, please do consider hitting the like and subscribe button. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.